Hello. Today we're going to tie up a little dry fly here. It was created by a gentleman by the name of Ed Story back in the 1950s. This is called the Crackleback. This is hands down probably one of the most popular dry flies in the last 40, 50 years, uh, especially around here in the Midwest. Uh, it is just proven itself as a great trout fly, um, all around panfish fly, bass fly, um, small fish fly, all kinds of different things. At the same time, you can tie this fly just in a standard dry fly hook like this, or you can have it on a longer shanked hook with a bead on it if you want. You can fish this as a nymph, as a dry fly, as a subsurface wet fly, um, all kinds of different things. Changing up the body color and materials on this can help make this fly effective in all kinds of different applications. So that crackleback is a great little fly, and let's get started. We'll get started tying up our crackleback by putting our hook in the vise. I'm using a Mustad R50 for this. This is a size 12. You could use a uh, Tiemco 100, any standard dry fly hook. If you want to put a bead on this, you could go with a 101 Tiemco or uh, like an R51 Mustad 9841, something like that. With our hook on the vise, I'm going to attach my thread. I'm using a brown. 80 uni thread, any small diameter brown thread. Some people will actually use even a bright colored thread like a, a burnt orange or rust orange or something like that. Um, even a red to add a little bit of attraction to the fly. First thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in our saddle hackle. I'm using a long saddle hackle simply because I can get a lot of flies out of this particular hackle. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to strip off the barbs from about four millimeters, maybe about an eighth to a quarter of an inch, something like that. I'll explain why in just a moment. With those stripped off, I'm going to tie this in with the dull side facing me. I'm going to tie this in right on the side like this. Just gently get it in there. And what I want to do is I want to pull this back so that the very base of those barbs right there is even with the bend of the hook. Again, I'll explain why in just a moment, why we're leaving a little bit of bare stem hanging off the back. I'm going to secure that in, tie in our next material. Next material for this is peacock curl. This is again a size 12 hook. I'm using just two peacock curls. If you were to go up in size, you might go with three. Uh, if you go down in size, even down to a 16 or 18, you might even just use one. I do want to make certain that these peacock curls are tied in and they are secured down to the very top of the hook because we're going to fold these over across the back and we want these to go right straight across the back. So if they're tied in off angle from one side here and we secure it on top of the hook up here, your back would actually kind of come across the fly. So just take a little care, make certain that, that those are tied in right on top of the hook shank. And then our next material we're gonna use is some turkey rounds. You could use either just a, like a cream dubbing, a super fine dubbing. If you wanted, you could use something with a little flash in it, um, just some sort of a light dubbing. The body is not that big on this fly. But we're going to use a turkey round here, which is one of the materials that uh, Ed's story actually used for this particular fly. This is just a cream colored. Again, you could use a chartreuse, an orange. If you want to vary these up a little bit, mostly you're going to change the color of the body. It's usually a brown and or traditionally a furnace hackle that is the, the hackle that's palmered on this with the peacock hurl. I have seen some people tie in a rib. Um, they want to turn around and put in a holographic tinsel or something like that. 
um, as a rib to add a little bit of flash to it. We're going to cut our turkey rounds off right down here at the base. And I'm going to tie these in by the tips. I have found that if I tie these in by the butts like this, I'm going to add too much of a bump right here in the, the fly. So I'm going to go ahead and tie these in by the tips. It just works a little bit better for me. I'm going to secure these onto the side of the hook and I want to make certain at this point that I have wrapped everything down to the very end of the shank which is generally going to be just at the base of the barb. Sometimes depending on the manufacturer of the hook that might even be right at the barb. And wrap forward, wrapping all of this in. I don't have to worry about making a really smooth body with this because the turkey rounds and or if you were dubbing this, the dubbing would actually be laying it down and covering it up. Now I'm going to use my rotary feature to uh, wrap this on here. I'm going to move my bobbin cradle into position, placing my thread over the bobbin cradle. I'm going to take the hackle or the uh, turkey rounds here. I'm stroking these just a little bit to try and get them all under the same tension in the same direction so that when I wrap these, I don't have any separation of the fibers. You want to be gentle with this because if you pull too hard, you'll actually break those off and you'll often have one of them break as you're wrapping that whole group and start to move out on its own. If you can see they're starting to separate a little bit here. You can stop if you want, pull those up a little bit more and reattach your hackle pliers or just continue. I find that the fly, the resulting fly still looks just fine. Once I get up to the eye of the hook, notice everything is right up smack to the eye of the hook there. I'm going to go ahead and move my bobbin cradle out of the way. Leaning those fibers forward, I want to trap all of them right up behind the eye of the hook. A couple, two, three wraps to secure those and trim away the waste. I'm going to wrap right behind the eye of the hook here a little bit just to wrap down those little nubby ends of the turkey rounds. Clean this up just a little bit. We do not want to make a real pronounced head on this. At this point I'm going to fold over the peacock hurl. I prefer to hold it in my right hand here off the front of the fly and then bring the thread over the top. I find if I hold it in my left hand I tend to get too loose of a body in here for some reason. So this works for me. And then you'll cut away the excess there. You want to go ahead and if you're going to tie a bunch of these, just go ahead and keep these um, nice and neat on the table because you're all set to tie this in for another fly. You'll be surprised how many flies you can get out of uh, just a couple of strands of peacock curl. Making certain my thread is right up behind the eye of the hook, I'm once again going to bring my bobbin cradle forward, place my thread over the bobbin cradle, and rotate the vise to palmer in the hackle. Now this is why I left a bare stem right here so that initially when I start to wrap, or I should say turn the fly and wrap the feather on, what I want to do is I want to grab just the back end of the fly like that so that I get one wrap of hackle right in on the back end. And you'll notice that the hackles are sticking straight out um, perpendicular to the fly. If I had barbs tied in right at the tail, as soon as I started wrapping that, I'd actually have some sticking out the back of the fly. Once I get that initial wrap in the back here, then I'm going to lean this forward so that I get five wraps, maybe six if you like it a little bit fuller, of hackle right along the body. Holding this right up behind the eye of the hook, I'm going to trap that in and bring the hackle fiber down about 90 degrees to the thread. And what that will do is trap the stem as well as the other fibers on the hackle 
so they can easily be cut out and I don't trap any of the surrounding fibers in the fly uh, under the thread wraps. And again, I'm not wanting to build up a big head or anything here, so after I get a wrap or two, just to make certain that's secure, I may trim off any errant hackle fibers that are sticking out the front, but then I'm going to go ahead and put in my whip finish. And this is just a three or four turn whip finish. This is a dry fly. Again, I'm not looking to make a pronounced head. I want to keep this kind of light. This is where if you had, you know, a red or a bright colored thread, you could uh, add a few extra wraps just to give it a little bit more attraction. Cut my thread off. Take an inspection. Sometimes you'll have some hackle fibers that get trapped under the head and they're sticking right out. You can just trim those off, although I don't think that it really matters that much. I like to place just a half a drop of head cement on the underside. Right there, it'll soak down into those threads and into the turkey rounds just to secure that a little bit more. And that is the crackleback. A great little fly if you're wanting to get out for trout, even panfish. Um, it's a great dry fly. You could put a little bit of sinking on it and have it just sink below the, the surface. Again, some people tie a bead head on it and actually fish this as a nymph. Uh, but all around it is just a super, super fly. Uh, you can vary up the body materials and colors to have uh, all kinds of different flies for different applications. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and not only learned a new pattern, but maybe learned some new techniques and a few new skills. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button below. You can support Dressed Irons by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified when new videos are published. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, remember, it's fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong.